Hi guys, welcome to our channel Home Banao. I am architect Pooja Kothari. Today I am going to tell you what are the components that goes into a slab, why making of a slab is so crucial and why your slab design should be done way before you start your construction process. So let me first tell you what a slab is. We are talking about a RCC slab. What RCC typically means is your reinforcements plus the concrete. That makes it reinforced cement concrete so you will have your rcc slabs you will have your rcc beams you will have your rcc columns and this is what is the entire structure made up of for any house in slab the first thing for you to be able to make a slab you need to do the shuttering so in the shuttering process what typically happens is you're trying to create a mold for your entire slab now, if there is a cutout, you will have to create a mould such that the cutout is being given first itself. And your bamboos are given to support the entire framework. You already have your columns which are erected and the beams will be created individually piece by piece as per your structural diagram. And then they will be attached to the column. After these beams are created, you will have the matting done. So this is your concrete reinforcement matting. Matting will be done as per your structural design. The gaps, whether it's four inches, six inches per rod, will be measured and done accurately on the site. Now, after the matting is done, typically what happens is your electrical conduits or your plumbing conduits, or if you have any centralized AC, then your mechanical conduits will run in between these rods. And these are specifically for all your ceiling points. For example, here we have one fan point and two light points. So this is already done at this stage. After this is done, your entire concrete will be poured. Now, how is your concrete going to be poured? You see a machine here. That machine will pump all the concrete ready mix of M25 grade and that will be poured onto this entire framework. Now, if you notice, there is also a mat here. This is a wooden mat. It is also called as chape. So this is essentially done so that it helps during the curing process. And after the RCC has been poured, it will take about six to eight hours to dry so that you can come over it. And after that, curing happens for 21 days. Now, after 21 days of curing, typically the entire form work or the entire mould that you had created will be removed. Now when that is removed, this chapi or mat also comes down on its own. In case the chapi does not come down and it is stuck to the slab, then that means the, that the quality of chapi used is not a good one. If you also notice below these electrical points that we have, the light or the ceiling points, small papers have been placed so that the concrete does not go in from down. So whenever this is removed, your light point is visible so that you can directly fix a light. So that is why this is essentially done. Now let's talk about why it is important to design a slab in your architecture stage. For example, if we were to have a double height here where we needed the slab to have a cutout, then that could be done only now before the concrete is poured, before the rodding is done, before the centering or the shuttering happens. It is not possible to do any changes after the concrete is poured and after the entire slab has been created. Why your beam layouts are so important when in the slab? Now, basically your slabs and beams are the structures which transfer the load to your bottom via columns and then to the foundation. So these beams, what role do they play in design is very important for you to know. Now, for example, this beam that you see is uh, 24 inches depth and the beam ahead is just 18 inches depth. Now, these spaces that you see within the beams are different rooms. For example, this is the master bedroom where we are standing. And for the beam to be between these two and not here in the center, it's because in the interiors, when I occupy this master bedroom, I don't want to sleep and see a beam right in my vision when I'm looking on the front wall while I sleep. So that's the reason planning these beams accurately is important by making it according to your architecture design. And also planning the depths is very important because you wouldn't want a beam of about 
30 inches on your site at any given point. A very minimal which can be covered in your fall ceiling will be agreeable. Your beams also play a very crucial role in the column positions. For example, if you do not want a center column, then you try to increase your beam depth and width so that you can eliminate a column and still the load can be transferred. This is when your beam also becomes very important to give you broader spaces. I want to specify why your column positions are also very important when you make your structure. Now for example, I have an external wall coming here and a partition wall coming there. So it's very important for me to have the load transferred and that is why below any wall you will have a beam structure to take the load and that internally transfers into your columns. Now these columns cannot come abruptly placed. Imagine this is the entire slab and you have a column right in the middle. This is my master bedroom. How will I place a bed? So that's why your column placements become very important at the initial planning stage where the column is placed rightly in the corners or wherever as per the design. So this is my plan and this is the master bedroom that we have which is about 13 feet by 10 feet in its measurement. Now here we have strategically placed the columns and the beams wherever there are junctions. So here the wall meets, here the wall meets and at this junction is where we have given this column and this is the connecting beam to it. Similarly at every partition wall or at every junction is where the columns have been planned and the beams have been used to connect these particular columns. Now what you also need to understand is how we have taken up the toilet slabs. Now your toilet slabs can be done in three methods. One is your raised slab. This is an ancient old practice where the slab is six inches above your finished level. The second method is the sunken slab method where in the shuttering level itself we will do a down detail for the slab where the reinforce will run downwards uh, like you see in the image. This was for the same site but we then changed it to the third method which is very popularly used for all apartments these days. This is at the same level as the floor. Now here what typically happens is a core cutting is done to pass all your plumbing pipes downwards. And I'll tell you why each of these methods are useful or not useful. Your raised slab can be a disadvantage because in night, in sleep, when you walk, you will not notice that you have to step up to use the bathroom. And you may tend to trip or slip, very risky for young kids or old people. The advantage of this slab method is chances of leakages in the slab or damage in pipeline is very low. The next is the sunken slab. Now your sunken slab is usually at the same level as your rooms. The only difference is all the pipes go beneath. So that is why it is done downwards, pipes go and then you have the tile level. So that makes both the levels the same. The disadvantage with this method is if you have any leakage in your pipes then you will have to remove the entire tiling, you will have to discard the entire cinder filling, redo the waterproofing and then is when you can rectify the issue. The third method which I was talking about which is popularly used in all apartments, here you have the slab at the same level like we are doing it here. There will be a core cutting done, a pipe will be passed. The advantage of this method is in a sunken slab you will see a projection in your parkings. But with this method you will not see any projections in your parking. The second advantage is if you have any damage in the pipelines, you can rectify it from the ceiling level where you have the fall ceiling put. So you do not have to break everything to rectify any plumbing issues. So these are the three types of toilet slabs that can be done and we are using the third type here. Now coming to your beams, all these beams are attached to your slab rods. This will be as per your structural diagram, the beam width, depth, will be decided based on the distance between the columns and whether you can cantilever or no is also based on the beam thickness. So the beam is a major connecting element between your walls, slabs and columns. 
coming to your columns now how does the load really gets transferred from top to bottom now let's just take one flow example we have an entire slab here assuming that this is a finished slab all the load on the slab which is we as humans will have some load all that will get transferred onto the slab from slab it will go into the beams from beams it will be transferred to your columns and from your columns it will be transferred to your foundation now what what is foundation basically below your columns there will be something called as footing so this particular footing is planted wherever your columns are and that will take the load to the soil so this is how the load distribution basically happens now i'm not going to get into the structural details of what divisions should be there what thicknesses should be used but i'm going to tell you only about the architectural perspective of why all of these are very important in design now you have to be very careful when you are designing parking area for any apartment or a house you typically don't want any objections in your parking area because then movement of your vehicles cars becomes very difficult so for that reason if you notice we have these three columns here coming from upper floors this is basically a floating column which you will not see in the lower floor the reason this beam is this thick is because it has to support this upper column which has been introduced only from the first floor onwards so the reason we have avoided this column below is because we wanted a clear passageway for the cars the column thickness was increased the beam thickness was increased so that we could get a free area so this is how uh, your structural engineers will design when you give specific requirements and this has to be done in the earlier stages so guys this was everything about the reinforced structure which is your columns slabs and beams and how it is made why it is important to design it early in architecture stage if you have any doubts regarding the content please post them in the comment section and we will answer to you thank you so much for watching please do share it with your friends and family if you thought it will help them